Thank you. Okay, today I wanted to uh, do a poison A with polymer clay. Uh, it's quite, there are several ways to do this, but the one I've chosen to do um, for the day is with my own molds. So let me start off by saying, if you if you can find a rubber stamp that's got good texture to it and a lot of open space, you can press, press that into some clay or into another mold and make a base out of that and then press your clay into that and get the poison effect that I'm looking for. Uh, also, you can cheat for that. With this one, I give that texture sheet. Uh, that showed up a little bit to make this mold. And I tried pressing into it to get this, but I didn't get a deep enough impression. So I'm gonna have to go back and try something else. But what I decided to do myself because I wanted a specific pattern. Is that I took a leaf, I, I sketched out a leaf on, on a sheet of paper, got the design, got some veins in there where I wanted them, took a piece of scrap clay, and this clay is real scrap, uh, pressed down real well. I took a ball stylus, and I've got the smallest ball stylus, the smallest ball I can find in, in a stylus and just trace over everything. So I'm just trying to transfer that image onto the clay. So as I do this, go through the outline, I'm gonna start in the middle, trace up, trace each vein all the way to the end. If I go over the edge a little bit, it's not too bad, depending on what, what you're looking to accomplish later. And me being the paranoid individual I am, once I've done this, I'm going to hold down the sheet of paper on the clay, pull it up and look at it and make sure I've got the leaf transferred the way I want it. And I think you can now see that I've got a, a decent leaf on there. I am now going to take a larger stylus and I've got two, I've got two different sizes here. I don't know how well they show up. Uh, I'm going to take, I decided to take the slightly smaller one for this instance. And I, I learned the hard way to start in the center and work my way to the edge, tracing over those lines again. As you do that, you're going to pick up play. And if you start in the edge and work, push towards the center, you'll have a a wad of clay in the middle. Don't ask me how I know that. But I'm going to trace over every single line. With this piece, it doesn't take too long. And I want to do the edge. So I'm going to keep pressing almost all the way to the top as I'm doing this. And you may need to pass over it two or three times just to make sure you get a good, deep impression. Because this is going to form the ridges that are gold in your cloisoning. So you really want deep impressions here. A little too deep. Okay. There's my extra clay. Some extra clay here that I need to get rid of. And I'll take this guy out. At this point, you've got, you've got a choice. I, uh, I've tried it both ways. You can either run the outline outside edge uh, here, as I've done with the inside veins, or what I'm going to do here is this is my preferred technique. So I actually take my knife and cut along that outside edge just so I get it cut out nicely. create a, uh, a challenge later on that I'll talk about when we get there. But let me do this and get this guy cut out nicely. Pull him up. And now I've got my, my leaf mold. Now, just because I pushed the clay, there's, I've created ridges everywhere, and you can see as I run my blade over it, I'm trimming those a little bit. It's not fully, it's not well trimmed. 
but I'm getting a little bit off there. Just kind of clean it up. I will then take that piece and leave it on this tile and pop it in the oven for about 35 minutes. This will run through the pasta machine on the thickest setting, by the way. And it looks like I can actually get that one a little bit deeper as I look at it. So I'll clean him up a little bit. And I got clay in the recesses there, which I'll take out. Just a little bit of cleanup work here. And just removing the ridge, I see. Okay, pop that guy in the oven, bake him for 30 minutes, and when he comes out, it will look a little like that. Um, if you choose to do it with uh, an outline, the edge, uh, so you've got just the, out, the, the outside ridge there as well, uh, you'll have this piece. Otherwise, you'll end up with this piece. And this is the piece I'm going to work with. Now, what I did with this guy is I took gold clay. I made I met with the machine so fairly, several times, so it's fairly soft. And I want, I'm using this as a mold, so I want to be able to, I want to, I want to release on that. So I've got some water over here. I'm just going to get him wet, get some water on the top. Put that down. So I'm going to set the clay on top of that. Now remember, I want the, the gold to go into each one of those veins I carved in this piece. And so I'm actually pressing along those lines about, and you can feel them where they are, to make sure I get them deeply recessed into that. And you can see it, it coming up fairly well recessed. I do want this this piece to be smooth, so I'm going to run a, my roller over that, kind of smooth it out a little bit. This is going to be the back side of my piece, so I want that to be smooth. Actually, it's not really going to be the back side. I'll talk about that in just a second. But I still need it smooth. That looks good. Uh, help me turn this thing over. I'm going to Trim off a lot of the excess. I'm going to leave a little bit there. Doesn't matter at the moment. I just want to get this out of the way so it's easier to put that piece over. We've got this guy. And if you want at this point, you can actually uh, trim that guy. I'm going to Trim me face down. I'm going to leave myself a little bit of an edge around the outside. As I trim it, I'm not looking to see if you guys can see what I'm doing. I think you can. I'm trying to keep my tile inside the viewing window. And this guy up a little bit more. There we go. I should be able to flip him over. And there he is. Nice. One last thing. I have learned through hard experience that people will invariably take one of my pieces that I've made and they will turn it over and look at the backside. They always do that. Um, so I have learned over the years to give them something to look at on the backside. So I'm going to take the clay and I'm going to run it through the machine on a slightly, because I don't need a lot of clay on the back side. So I've got this guy. I've got a wet tile. I've got this guy. And I've got a texture sheet that's called Ripple. I'm going to get him wet, because again, I need a release agent on there. Put my play on that. And this is one of those, you only do this once. That guy out of the way, so I'm gonna damage him. I'm gonna start here, hold everything down and press firmly and go through it once. Go across. And you will see 
on my roller, which I didn't put on the on. Yeah, I've got some nice touch. I'm going to find a spot on there that I like the best. Looks like this one's a good one. I will put my leaf on there. Clean my tile up again because I watered it once more. I need to that kind of thing. Put that on there. And then roll the edge down just a little bit if I need to. I take my blade, put it on the outside. That, and I'm being a little bit liberal with, with this cut, I know, because I've got a little bit of a gap right now. So, this is the challenge of you. If you don't put the ridge on, if you don't use this guy, then you've got to somehow get that outside on this poison egg. And that is where we end up with a problem right now. And I'm going to just kind of pitch that guy into place. All the way around the edge there. Yes, there is water by the leaf. We'll deal with that in just a second here. I want to get this towel really tight around the edge, pinch them in place like that. And then come in and just come along and I can clean up around the edge. Just a little bit of clean up here and there. Kind of make sure things kind of look reasonably nice. It's always nice. If I put more work in at this point, there is less work after I've baked. I'm big on not doing a whole lot of work after baking. We got a little bit extra around the edge, so I'll go ahead and trim here and there. Do a little bit of cleanup work as we go. You get this guy nice, nice smooth edge on him. There is a, a touch you can do when you're finished, and I'll talk about that when we finish. If you're not happy with the edge yet, but for the most part, I think we've I think we've had a good piece there. So I'll take this guy, a little more cleanup work on the edge, just to get him where I want him. So he's so he's got a nice look to him. Take the take the water out of the middle. And again, I will what I will do at this point is I will take a paper a paper towel and put him on the paper towel. The reason if I bake polymer clay on a smooth surface, it will take on the texture of the smooth surface. So if I bake on this tile, all my ridges here will become smooth, shiny, and a lot of them will get flattened. So since I want something, so I want to save the texture on the back of it, I'll put him on the napkin. The napkin's got enough texture, enough, uh, so it's soft enough that the uh, clay won't take on the shape of the, of the napkin. The napkin will move with the clay as it takes, and it won't be a problem. Now I can, I can just pop this guy in the oven just like that. Bake him for about half 30 minutes or so. Yeah, I keep playing with this. But okay. Uh, and so once it comes out of the oven, I will have a piece that looks like this. Leave the texture on the back. Oh, uh, one thing I'm at this point. Once in a while, I've had a problem where I got. Uh, and if I show you here, you can see there's a little bit of a right along here where something happened while it's making the mold. I can you can actually go in at this point before you bake. 
one of your clay shapers. This guy is one of my favorites. You press that down. Now, this isn't overly critical on the bottom of the mold, bottom of the piece, because the polymer clay we're using, the uh, um, liquid clay is are opaque, so it's not going to show through. But if you like a nice touch, just do that. Anyway, do that. That's done. I now have this piece. And I've got nice good ridges in there. You can see I've got a, an oops right here that I didn't clean up. Uh, but that's okay. It'll, it'll take care of itself in just a few minutes. All I need to do now is to put liquid clay in those spots. And this is, you know, whatever you like to do. I'm going to, oh, let me say, uh, if you read the instructions on the liquid clay when you get it, it says stir it. Uh, especially these that have been sitting on the shelf for a long time uh, tend to get tend to settle. They'll be thicker on the bottom than they are on the top. These guys are stirred pretty much last few days, so they don't have much much of a problem there. But I can use that to give me some clay in my tray here. He said, yeah, right. Get in there. Thank you. And get some a few drops of clay in there. Again, uh, I'm learning I don't need much. I've got a lot of places where I use too much clay. and So I got to play with it, do some more things, tricks with it. But having said that, I've got lots. Keep a file on that, and Sandy. Oh, they are. I'm going to go through napkins doing this like crazy. Okay, um, I'm then going to take that. I'm going to add, I think, a little bit of rose gold to this time. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, is that this one says rose rose gold? See, it, it is very very tiny print on there. I know this one was mixed up yesterday, and it doesn't settle that quickly, so it should be good. I was gold in there. And a stir. That's not quite the bottom red I was going for. I'm going to put one more drop of red in there. It helps if you open the container before you try to start squeezing it. Okay, one more drop of red. Just to kind of add some more red to it. And then I'm going to take that, and you can fill up any one of these bins, any one of these spaces completely with the liquid clay. Or you can do what I'm doing, and I'm going to try and put it along just one edge of the uh, space. I need to be very careful to keep it off the ridges that I've created. Like I just put it on there. Good, because there's a lesson in how to clean it off there that we now talk about. Another one of those things I've learned the last few days. So with my toothpick, I'm picking this up. You know, this is watching me do this is about, about as much fun as watching paint dry. But uh, Trying to get it into the corners while at the same time keeping it off the ridges, which I'm doing a very poor job of. And okay. You can see this clay is actually coming up rather opaque. Okay. Red. I'm going to put a, just a touch of gold in each of those. And again, I'm going to do it the same way. 
This should be the gold. This is the this is the gold. And I've stirred these yesterday, so I'm not stirring them today. But if you haven't, if you've been sitting for a while, I would strongly encourage you to stir them because they do settle. On, they do settle on you. Uh, I did learn that the hard way. I'm gonna fill up the little spot right here. Get into the corner. Got that. Take the gold. I don't know why I'm doing it this way, but I want to try it. And I want to show you a little bit of a blending technique I've been playing with while I do this. Get some gold in there. The toothpick, using the toothpick in there uh, is a better way to go than trying to use the dropper on the uh, on the bottle. Uh, I had less control over what, how much I released with the with the just squeezing the bottle. And I found that put using the toothpick, I can get it into more places, do a better job of getting it where I want it. And I had more control actually went in. So I do encourage you to do what I'm doing here. Put it on a tray or something else. Uh, it also helps you if you want to mix it. And then you've got a lot more control over what you're doing with the, uh, the liquid clay. It's use just a touch more gold. I'm going to put one more drop in here. After you open it up, put one more drop in there. Gold clay. That was the gold. Whatever it is is going in now. Okay, I've got clay in most of those spots. I've got a spot here. Don't know if you can see it. We've got a spot right here that doesn't have clay in it. So I'm going to try and move coat. And create the clay into that location. You know, the toothpick, it's easy. Uh, I've got some clay here that didn't go where I wanted it. So we take, take the toothpick and move it over. Now, I also want to get a little bit of blending going on. So I'll take the toothpick and drag it from one into the other. So we get some blending occurring. Get some nice variations in there. In that spot. Okay, I've got that done. Now I've got a few places where I've got clay that got onto my gold, my actual gold clay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a very small piece of uh, pastel. Actually, this is napkin. Now, just a very small piece. Wrap it around the toothpick so I've got some control over it. With my large hands, I need a lot of control. And then I can come in and just gently wipe the edge of those things and get the clay where I want it to be. Now, this guy. Now, uh, just to speed things along, I'm going to take emerald. Yeah, let me do this. One should always just say what they're doing before they start the demo. I'm going to put some emerald in here. Now, the emerald is quite dark, darker than I really like. Uh, so I'm going to put pearl clay in there and light that up. <laughs> and with that, I will take a clean toothpick. And mix it up. See what kind of a green I get out of it. Got way too much play in here, but I'm going to put a few more drops of green in there because I prefer a slightly more emerald look. 
Oops. Too many. Fix that up a little bit. We make it a little bit darker, a little more emerald look to it. A little toothpick is dying on me. A little toothpick. And I'm just gonna use, I'm just gonna fill up each of the other side of my leaf with this guy. Add him in here. I need to be kind of careful because this is a little bit goopy and it does tend to run. And it tends to give me lots of stringies that for some reason go for clothes, especially white trousers. It loves white trousers. A blue on a blue shirt wouldn't be a problem. It would be much darker blue than my shirt was. We're trying to figure out what we're going to do. Maybe turn the blue shirt dark blue. We're going to need a blue shirt. Now, I could blend this with some gold or yellow or blue or anything else I wanted. But for the sake of my audience, who is I'm going to get bored watching me fill in small little crevices. Uh, we'll just loop it into here. Make sure I get in there. Get all the little corners filled up. I don't know if you've noticed, as I'm picking up the clay with the toothpick, I am rolling the toothpick when I pull it out of the tray. So I scoop it here. Once I lift it up, I'm rolling it to catch the drips back onto the tooth onto the toothpick. It gives me a little more clay to work with, and it keeps me from dragging clay all over my work. So, not done that before on this. Oh no! Okay, I've got that side filled up. Uh, I'm along my cleanup tool. Carefully, very carefully wipe the clay off there. And I've got a little spot in here. I've got clay on one of my ribs. Let me wipe that off very carefully. Don't nope, try it. No, nope, I need to. I need a little bit of a napkin to do that. Not much, just ever so small a piece. Wrapped around the toothpick, so I've got control. And then come in here, that guy, and wipe off that. That didn't work. I'm being attacked by it. Try it one more time. Oh. Take a my napkin as well. Take a dry napkin. Wrap the tooth, wrap around the toothpick. Hit control. Wipe. There we go. Got it. Okay, at this point, um, I've got a little bit of a touch up we need to do down here. I can see it all the way. Filled in. I got a spot here that's not quite filled in, but I can do that easily with a toothpick. This doesn't go all the way up. It's going to be a tricky one. Get him up there. And there we go. At this point, I'm going to bake him one more time. Again, I'm going to put him on a paper towel or a napkin, something, some soft surface, because otherwise, as it heats up and bakes, it is going to try to remove some of the texture from the back, and I really want the texture on there. Because like I said, people keep trying, taking my pieces, turning them over and looking at the back to see what's there. 
I don't know why. I don't know what the fascination with the back of my piece is, but everybody does it. So I give them something to look at. And I go and bake it. It may not be as deep as I want. I can always come back later and have more clay to it. There is also a very clear uh, liquid polymer clay. I haven't tried it yet, but they claim it is really clear. And I may go back in and put some clear on top of this, or I uh, looking at doing work with resins, filling in a little bit with uh, some clear resin wouldn't hurt either and as an option for things to do to, to finish this off. But right now, before I make any bigger mess on what I'm doing, I'm going to stop and I'm going to put that in the oven and bake it for another half an hour. And when it comes out of the oven, it will look like kind of like that. Can I ask, how long did you bake that? I baked that for half an hour. Uh, okay. That's my that's my rule of thumb. I just bake things for half an hour, 45, 45 minutes. If they're thicker, I've been known to bake something, and I think I baked one item for an hour and a half because it was really thick. But generally, most of my stuff is half an hour. Uh, let's see. I, I, uh, if the back when it's raw, I talked about putting some mica powder on the back of the, this one. It's raw, didn't I? You can, okay, if I didn't, uh, when you just put the back texture on there, if you want, you can get some some of the uh, Perlex powders or mica powders. Just touch them and hit the high points on this. It'll enhance the high points, a little bit of color, a little bit of sparkle. Give a little bit more uh, image to the back. This guy needs to be sanded. And there is one last trick I was going to mention at this point. If you're not happy with the outside, and I'm not totally happy with the outside of this, um, there is last things you can do to enhance the, the look back there. I take my clay, run to the plastic machine, and I'm running through. Oh, okay. I'm running through on one of the thinner sets. Let me just read it. Okay, so I've got a piece of clay like this. Uh, that's too long for what I need to do, I hope. So I'm going to just cut him here. I'm going to fold him in half. Oof, doesn't matter. I don't need to be overly neat on this. I just need it folded in half. So I've got a big shiny edge there. Little and work the edge to squeeze the air out of that thing. And I can do that with a brayer. So I squeeze the edge out so I got a nice sharp crease. The nice thing about this crease is it will be shiny. And then I can take my piece. Pick a starting point. I'm going to put him face down on the tile and put the clay up against it. And so that the top of the clay is against the tile. Don't worry about the fact that it sticks out around the bottom. That's okay. If you want a little bit of liquid clay around this, just a very hint of liquid clay around that can sometimes help get it to stick. <clears throat> But if you are very careful, press in firmly, it generally is not a problem. There we go, got it. Now I've got that squeezed down, pressing along the edges here so that he is well, well in there. Clean up my top right along here. Okay, I'm going to squeeze that together so that I hide that seam. Put this guy once more on the tile. I'm going to take my clay blade that I just lost. I'm going to take my clay blade, come in here and just cut it. 
And since I've already baked this, the bottom piece, just the gold piece, I can just cut fairly close to the surface. As, as I'm careful, I won't cut through the baked clay. And then I've got a nice little ridge, a nice little frame around this whole thing. And again, I would take this guy and bake him for at least 20 minutes uh, at this point. And this is done after I've baked the cloisonne. So this is one last bake on there. Let's see, it'll give me a nice smooth edge. Hide some of the cuts I've made. And give you a, just a kind of a nice look on my on my finished piece. And that would be what I would consider a finished piece. Uh, and let me Stop the recording at this point. Dead stop the recording at this point.